Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. How are you all doing today? Today we're going to be having a look at good old BBC and amazingly the apparent struggles that it takes to be able to get a goddamn haircut when you somehow don't know who the hell you are. So, with that being said ladies and gentlemen, Let's dive into the privileged world of I'm going to have so little problems that I'm going to moan about where and how I get my hair cut and how it makes me feel that I don't fit in either. Welcome back everybody, we're going to listen to a person called Grey Cosby that is going to be giving us their rendition of their strifes and problems. Sometimes I need a haircut. It's really that simple. Well, if it was really that simple, why are you creating a poem about activism and doing all this type of thing about getting your goddamn haircut? If it was really that simple that, oh, you just need a haircut and you're going to go get it, why? Why bother? Why bother? Or is that the whole point that you think that even something so simple as getting your hair cut makes you turn out to be a goddamn victim? Because, you know, I have all the problems in the world because I can't get my hair fucking cut. But simplicity seems to jump out the window when I head out the door into our society which has a limited capacity for people who don't fit the norm. So they have a limited capacity to understand people like you because you don't fit the norm. Does this actually pass for a goddamn personality nowadays? Is this really what we're trying to push to our children? That this is what a goddamn personality is to make you unique? If you don't accept being male or female, apart from if you actually have gender dysphoria, as the norm, then that is somehow now a personality trait. And because society apparently as a whole, even though they do, doesn't accept it, apparently that simplicity takes right out the window. Have you ever thought that the norm is simplicity, but you're outside of simplicity because you are different? Which means, technically, if you want, Virtue signal in here, you're more complex than other people. And we're normally offered female or male. Mark the box of a tick, please make yourself fit. But I'm more that other, if that's even an option. You literally just explained why male and female is normally presented onto a sex form as in an identification for you especially if it comes down to a medical form as different sexes generally have different ways of being treated for different diseases or conditions by and large as well also get different conditions and diseases as they age as well which is important to why you mark down in a medical document what sex you are. Now, when it comes to the point of work documentations, I would imagine that a lot of work documentations now actually have that other box that you want to tick. And the reason why it's other is because there are so many other to be able to put into it. Remember how many different genders there are. If you just put non-binary or trans down, you also have to include everybody else. So the way of doing that very, very easily is by putting other down. You are being actually embraced by society, but yet that's still not good enough for you because you still feel that you're not being embraced because your personal identity isn't being acknowledged. Like I'm some thing on the outside, existing beside the world as it rolls by all pink and blue. So let me get this straight. You actually think that girls all like pink. 
I know that you're trying to put this down as a stereotype to try and say that stereotypes are the ones that are holding things back. I understand what your analogy in this poem is supposed to be, the metaphor behind it, so to speak. I understand. But you're trying to suggest that boys that like to do girls' things are going to be some other particular gender or whatever because you feel that way. Or vice versa for girls that like football, that are actually just tomboys, that actually just are girls that like boys' things. Now, mind you, you do everything like the way that you want to do, but don't put your crap onto other people and expect your crap to be an instant transmission of what they think and feel. In this society entirely divisible by two into women and man, but I relate most to that, ampersand. So, let me get this straight. You wanted to break down the idea of social norms, the idea of a social understanding and scientific binary of sexes, to try and suggest that this should be broken down and passed around so more people could identify and persist as you. Now remember, this is all to do with a f haircut. Sorry, almost. And yet, you come along seconds after saying that you condemn all of this social conditioning and contracting to say that you present as a masculine male and you present yourself as such. Do you not see the contradictions in what you are espouting or is it just a word salad that is all to do with ticking boxes for virtue signalling? And I need a haircut. So option one is the salon. Okay, I get it. You don't like salons. I'm guessing because it's too feminine for you. The same as a lot of guys don't like salons and don't go to salons because it presents as too feminine. So does that mean that you're excluded from going to salons? Or does that mean that that's your preference to not go to salons because you don't like how feminine it is because of your own prejudice or uncomfortability. That womanly world of perfumed femininity with which I feel like I have little affinity. Or option two is the barber which isn't much better since this voice and these swells in my chest make me feel like an infiltrator. So let me get this straight. You spent most of this video, this poem that you've been reciting, about saying how society is letting you down and how society is the one that's pushing you out. But yet now you're saying that there is a place for you to go, as in to the barbers, but yet you you feel like you cannot go because you feel like an infiltrator. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not society's problem. That's yours. If you feel like you're an infiltrator, if you don't feel that you're good enough, if you don't feel like something, then guess what? That's on you, not on society, to change that for you. Barbers or salon, when I get to the chair. Before we can even touch on my hair, there's this question which hangs there unuttered and awkward, then made all the more awkward when they say, I know this is awkward. And through the mirror, they ask if I'm a boy or a girl. Oh no, somebody actually asking what your pronouns are without actually saying what are your pronouns. Almost like they're trying to make sure that they call you by the right pronouns. Almost like they're trying to respect who you may want to present as. Oh my god, society is so harsh in asking, what are you? In the way that you deem as wrong. You want them to ask you what your pronouns are, but you want them to specifically go, what are your pronouns? Not, are you a boy or a girl? Which, admittedly, could be a little bit insensitive. But guess what? They're asking you your goddamn pronouns. And you're still goddamn moaning about it. Am I trans? Am I gay? And I 
don't know what to say. Sometimes I pick my labels to make other people feel okay. So let me get this straight. You have just spent so long in trying to explain that you want to be accepted for who you are, to be presenting as who you are for as long as possible in the whole of this video. You get to the point when people are actually asking you what your goddamn pronouns are, what you want to be addressed as, and yet you can't give a straight answer, no pun intended. You can't give an actual answer to what you are actually are or what you want to be presented as. Do you think that there's a problem with society in that? Or do you think that there's a problem with you in the fact that you can't even decide on what you want to be presenting as? Because you try to decide what you're going to present as in the room. But it's never enough to say where I'd like to be trimmed or shaved. They need to know my sex. How else can they charge the appropriate rate? Right, so you have so many people like yourselves that have been asking for the correct pronouns to be used. So when people ask you what sex that you are, what gender you are, you get pissy about it because they didn't ask you in the correct way. As in, what are your pronouns? People are now going, are you a boy or a girl? Now, maybe you might think, oh, well, that's a bit insensitive. The point is, they are asking you how you want to be addressed maybe not in a way that you want it to be asked but they are asking you how you want to be addressed but yet somehow working out whether or not that you want a girl's haircut which costs more because most of the time you want your hair washed dried cut layered and all the other situations or stuff that comes with it that normally has the people that can do those hairs trained at a higher standard than what a generalized barber would be to cut men's hair because let's be honest it's harder to cut women's hair than it is to men's hair surprising i know surprising i'm sure you've seen the signs gents trim five quid women's trim nine it doesn't matter how I define anyway when the hair on our head is charged by what's between our legs and... Right, so does this come from a unisex salon or unisex barbers? You know, when generally they all have two different standards of how they cut men's to women's hair. As in how most women that have their hair cut normally have it washed before they have it cut which most men do not have their hair washed, which can, you know, have preparation time, time it takes to actually cut and style as well beforehand, having a different actual, you know, time consuming and skill level to do. But you know, forget all of the actual points and issues that go into cutting hair. It's as simple to you as, well, he's a male, so he's getting it cheaper because he's a man, compared to me because I identify at that instance as a female, apparently. As usual, there always seems to be a higher price to pay for those who are female. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And I know that the majority of people do feel safe in this divide. That there's so much possibility if we trim a bit off our prejudices. And I know in the past few years things have been changing and that is amazing. There's drag queens on TV and out queer celebrities, hormones and surgeries. But... It's not enough for me. It's not what I need. I need you to correctly call me by my pronouns, but ask me in the correct way of asking me what my pronouns are, because I think that men are getting things cheaper than women, even though I identify as a man, and I still need to complain about the fact that I can't get my hair cut. And that is a social injustice. Still too often, there's some of us standing clutching our bladders stuck trying to decipher which bathroom door symbol we better resemble based on what we are wearing or how brave we are feeling i get it it's such a hard decision to decide whether or not what toilet that you're going to use out in public i get it 
it's such a social injustice that you can't decide what picture on a door that you're going to walk through. As arbitrary as you try to make that sound, it is so important to you that you pick that right picture for you to be able to walk through because that picture actually means so much more than what you actually want to give it credit for. But you know, well, that picture is arbitrary, so why does it really matter in the first place what door you go through? There's day-to-day -day struggles people quietly battle, like finding a way to wear your own skin while navigating a world in which we don't always fit in. Yeah, a lot of people have your issue of not actually feeling comfortable in their own skin, of not feeling that they are the correct way that they want to be, they don't feel that people perceive them in the right way, they don't feel comfortable, they don't feel that they fit in. That is probably, as a generalisation, 99% of the population probably doesn't actually feel that they fit in in every social situation or every social gathering. There are going to be people that do, but majoritively, most people don't feel that they fit in. Most people are not comfortable in their own skin. I don't mean this in a horrible way, but welcome to life. We're queer and we're here and life can be tough out there. So do you have to make a fuss or could you just cut our fucking hair? Um, first of all, you're the one who's actually making the fuss about getting their hair cut. To the point that you're actually making a fuss so much that you decided to write a poem that got you on to the BBC. So who's the one that's actually making a fuss about getting their hair cut? I mean, do you really feel that entitled that you can force people to do stuff that they necessarily don't want to do? Oh, of course you bloody do. Of course you feel that entitled that you need to force people to do that. My God, how else would society function if we didn't do what you, Grey, wanted to happen? How we should address you, how you feel, in the labels of the room that you so choose and want. If you could ever decide what you actually want to be called, then maybe we could actually start, you know, calling you that way. Until then though, I suppose we're the bigots, we're the people that are out of our way to go against you, and we're the ones that are apparently making a fuss. So, as I said, now we move on to the actual state of the BBC and the propaganda of the BBC. They're not just going to do one TV show where they show the idea of barbers and everything else like that being bad. They're going to have to show how all barbers on a different show are going to be bad as well. So let's get to it, shall we? So now what we're going to do is we are going to move on to... BBC The One Show and how this is now being perpetuated as women cannot get hair cut in barber's shop and how it's bad that some men may have a particular space that they can go and be men and how the men that actually run these shops are apparently discriminatory because they actually do this. I mean, it's not like that we have women-only gyms, women-only salons, women-only so on and so forth. But as soon as there's a men-only, apparently all women, all they want to do is get into that space for some particular reason. I have no particular idea why that actually happens. But let's, let's try and see how the BBC are going to play this, shall we? very vocal about the, the fact that um, you don't allow women to get haircuts. Is, is there a specific reason why? Well, it's, it's a barbershop. It's not about the haircut. It's about everything that goes with it. So, as we can tell from the last story, it was a case of that, that last person was trying to decide whether or not that they wanted to go to unisex, go to a barbers, go to a salon, so on and so forth, because there are different types of barbers and salons that cater to different markets. It's amazing to me that the BBC go up to a barbers and go, right, so why won't you let women come into a men's only barbershop? That's a bit sexist, isn't it? 
call the other one BBC. If it's sexist for men to do it, then it's sexist for women to do it, for women-only stuff. So either you argue for true equality or you argue for special pleading or treatment. Though, I'm guessing you're always going to argue for the latter. You know, it's a safe space for men to come in and just relax and be men. What difference would it make? Before I let the gentleman in question answer, and he does answer actually really well, what difference would it make for a man to be able to go to a woman's only gym? What difference would it make to a man go to any place that is women's only? What difference would it make apart from the fact that women wanted their own particular space and nobody is objecting to the women only space? Why is it that women are objecting to a man's only space? Now remembering that all of the arguments, as in how women feel safer, secure, more happy, harmonization, so on and so forth, with the women only spaces, would it not transmute or transfer over to the case of it being for a men's only space? I suppose in the BBC's mind, no it doesn't, any man that wants his own particular space or area is obviously going to be misogynistic and transphobic and all the other descriptors of bigotry. Of course, because it only works one way, doesn't it? Change the atmosphere, because all of a sudden now it becomes a unisex salon. And that's not what I am, I'm a barbershop. One woman becomes two, becomes three, becomes four. A lot of men don't know how to talk to women. They feel very, very almost nervous. There's the Equality Act that you're probably aware of. Mm. Are you just deciding not to face it? I do absolutely love the way that the BBC try to push this. Oh, there's the Equality Act. Are you just not trying to follow the Equality Act by what you're doing? Um, by your logical input, which, let's be honest, is a little bit low, on the logic side, but let's follow it for just for humorous sake, shall we? If it was against the Equalities Act for this gentleman or any other gentleman that has decided to make it a men's only place, then women's only places are also against the Equalities Act. And throwing that up towards the men and not towards the women shows the biasness in which you have. The reason why I'm against it is simply because if you're going to have equality and argue for equality then it has to be a level playing field. Not one rule for one compared to one rule for another. Don't do as I do but do as I say. Am I right BBC? Am I right? I'm catering to my market. My market is men. There's women only taxis, there's women only gyms. You know and I'm not going to change my business model and I'm not going to compromise my beliefs. So are other barbers more accepting than Johnny's? Charlotte's been to five others in the city centre. You jumped up, piece of BBC goddamn misrepresentation, la di da, sun dried in tomato. Oh, come. Right, let's look at this. You have just said that the person who has decided to make a men's only space isn't accepting of people. Okay, argument. Does that mean that any other place that is only women accepting, in other words, only accepts women, or only trans people, or only black people, or whatever singular group that is now going to be accepted and have a safe space for, does that mean that they are now not accepting? Because if so, logic would dictate that all safe spaces are now non-acceptance and are now by your own assertion, or at least trying to assert by implying bigotry. But hey, I don't expect the BBC and the presenters to actually logically go through their argument and be consistent and logically and consistently apply it to all standards. I just expect them to apply it to people that they deem as the enemy. Guess who they decided that the enemy is in this occasion? Guess. 
Well done, BBC. Well done. Can't wait for you to lose your license fee because this is amazing TV that I am forced to pay my license fee for.